I paint here in the studio, very rarely outside in situ because of the nature of the work. It's very photographic, so I take lots of reference shots, sketches, colour notes, and then I paint in the studio. I reckon I'm painting about between five and six and a half hours a day, which I think is enough because it's very tight work, very intense. I can be working on an area about that big all day long. And at the end of the day, you know, your eyes get pretty tired. So that, that's enough usually. It, my, my style of painting is described as photorealism. And that's just the way I work. It's very tight. I'm, I've tried to loosen up over the years, but it's impossible. So I just stick with what I feel most comfortable doing. So wherever I am abroad on holidays or business or whatever, um, I'm always got, I've always got my camera with me. So I'm taking pictures constantly of interesting signs that appeal to me. A certain type of neon, usually quite old can be broken. So I take various photographs and make notes of the, the, the lighting, the, uh, the colours. I might sometimes have a small sketchbook, make a quick sketch. I then work from photographs which I blow up on the, on the computer. And I'll adjust those photographs to suit the image I want to paint. So it's not necessarily a straightforward representation of the photograph. I can take things out put things in, stretch things, or bring things in closer. Always been interested in astronauts and the space race since a kid. I was just absolutely fascinated with it. I thought it was fabulous. And I used to collect photographs as a kid and, and put them into scrapbooks of astronauts and space travel. So I've gone through, right back through all my old scrapbooks and pictures which I collected when I was about a teenager and I've sorted out an image which I think would work well with new materials and this is what I'm working on at the moment. There are various colours I feel I couldn't do a painting without. Um, neutral tint, either acrylic or watercolour, fabulous colour. Crinacridone, which people are seeing just about everything I paint. I seem to be obsessed with it and I can't get away from it, but I love it. Windsor Blue, uh, Naples Yellow, uh, Sepia, Indigo. I could go on, there's so many fabulous colours, but Windsor Green, uh, lots of, yeah, and, and I'd never go near black. I mean, my blacks are always mixed up from a combination of neutral tint, indigo, purple, crimson, to give it a bit of depth. I mean, all the colours are always mixed. I, I don't ever use a straight colour. I'll always mix it to whichever colour is in my photograph. So it's never straight from a tube, ever. But uh, yeah, they're, they're some of my favourite colours. With, with the piece I'm working on for uh, Windsor & Newton, I've used some of the sticks and the pens and the limited edition palette, which is excellent. The sticks and the pens were totally different for me to use with regard to using a brush, but uh, I actually had quite a lot of fun with them. I, I could, um, on, on the picture I'm working on, the astronaut, I found that I could go around the edges of uh, where it hits the black with the, the, the sticks and then run water into it and it would bleed out and it, it worked rather well. And I'm actually looking forward to working over the black at the end with some of the sticks, which I can see quite a good use there. Uh, brushes I use are, well, most people think they're absolutely tiny, but I mean, I'm just so used to using them. They're all sable hair brushes, watercolor brushes, uh, double O's, O's, threes. A big brush to me would be something like a number four, which to everybody else is minuscule. But I can 
you know, the, the, there's it's so much detail in these things that uh, when you're working on an area like this all day, you don't you don't need a big brush.